If you're graduating from college and not sure what you want to do and take a flyer on a, on a summer job in baseball, can you make a career out of that? Join me as I next interview Paul Barbeau. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Uncommon Sense. We have a thrilling program for you today. Today, I'm going to interview Paul Barbeau, who is our president and general manager of the Great Lake Loons, a low A affiliate of the LA Dodgers in the Midwest League. It is a baseball team, and I'm going to learn a lot. Paul was born in Boston. He went to Georgetown, where he majored in history. Uh, through a fluke, he ended up in this field, about which we're going to find out shortly, but he was vice president and general manager of the Spokane Indians. During his time there, he set record attendance level and boosted sales of sponsorship and concessions. And to his credit, he was named executive of the year of the Pacific Coast League. Pacific? Northwest. Northwest League in 2000. And now he's in Midland, so we're, we're so happy to see him. So Paul, <coughs> first of all, welcome to Midland. Thank you very much. And secondly, as I told you, I have a lot to learn. So what is it exactly you do? Well, as the general manager of a minor league baseball team, I'm responsible for the day-to-day -day business operations of the franchise. So that encompasses uh, a lot of different areas, ticket sales, marketing, uh, sponsorships and promotions, uh, food and beverage, merchandise, stadium operations, uh, managing our relationship with our major league uh, affiliate, the Los Angeles Dodgers, uh, managing our employees, customer service, all of those kinds of things uh, for the franchise. Uh, what I'm not responsible for is the players on the field. Typically when you think of a general manager of a professional sports team, you think of somebody who's deciding what players are on your team right. and, and making trades and player moves and all those kinds of things. But at the minor league level, uh, we have a relationship with the Los Angeles Dodgers, and they handle all of those uh, items. So I have no say on, on who our players are. Uh, we just get a uh, roster of players from the Dodgers. If they want to promote somebody to the next level of their organization, they can just uh, take that player away from us and promote him. Uh, so we have no control over the players, but what we try to control is is the event and the experience that our fans have when they're at the games. Do you set the vision or the goals or does the board set that? How, how much freedom do you have? I, I feel in, in this role I've had considerable freedom. I think I've had an opportunity to, to use my past experiences in Spokane and, and build on some of the success that we had there in Spokane and try to create something here in, in Midland and, and not only for Midland but for kind of the entire region. Uh, and have a lot of freedom, which is which is great. We do have a board uh, led by Bill Stavropoulos and and other uh, leaders here in the community, and and they're certainly there as a resource for me, and and help kind of create that vision. And certainly, Bill's been a big big part of that vision. Uh, but I, I feel like I've been able to kind of have my own stamp on this franchise, which is exciting. That's a big really? reason. A big reason why I, I picked up and moved. So yeah. When you talk about relationships with the LA Dodgers, what what kinds of things does that encompass? We have a two year agreement with the Dodgers and uh, are the only options you have is either a two or four year agreement. You can't go any longer than that. Uh, so we signed a two year agreement with them and they provide us all of the players. Mm -hmm. All of the coaches, uh, Lance Parrish is our manager, we have a pitching coach, a hitting coach. All of those folks are employees of the Dodgers, paid by the Dodgers. Uh, what we provide is a venue and a setting for them to play and, and then a league to compete in. So, uh, so that's kind of how that works and, and it's important to have a good working relationship. What we want to be is the best place for a major league affiliate to send their players. What uh, makes for the best place? A lot of things. Uh, facility is a big, big 
part of it, and I don't no. think anyone can compete with us no, on facility. It's really gorgeous. It's fantastic. Uh, uh, management, you know, quality leadership and management, and making sure that the day-to-day -day operations run smoothly. Uh, fan support is a big part of it. You know, major league teams want to send their players to places where. Uh, fans come out and support the team, uh, and we've done that so far. We have over 4,000 people per game coming out to Loon's games, and, and that's a good thing. Um, so a combination of those factors are important when a major league team thinks about where they want to have their minor league teams play. Uh, <clears throat> I noticed when I read the schedule, there seems to be a lot of entertainment mm -hmm. uh, tied to various games, and it changes. How, what is the role of entertainment? with the sport event? It's, it's hugely important and it's become more and more important I think. Um, there's a core group of baseball fans who would come out and see us uh, even if we didn't have all of that entertainment. Uh, they would come out just because they're die-hard baseball fans but we need to attract more than that. We need to attract kind of the casual fans or even the non-fans and we do that by providing a great entertaining evening. So we like to have fans go away from the game and maybe not even even having paid attention to the game or uh, not even knowing who we've played <laughs> yeah. or if we won or lost but come away saying they had a great time because of fireworks after the game or uh, some different things that were going on during the game or between innings and that's that's become important the, the baseball game is almost kind of uh, an excuse for us to entertain everybody in lots of other ways and not to take anything away from the baseball because that's very very important as well um, but the entertainment side is, is equally, if not a little bit more important. What did you find that uh, in your past time in Spokane that people like by way of entertainment? You know, uh, fireworks are uh, kind of the old standby that are yeah. always popular uh, to keep people happy, so that's always a, a big draw. I think people like uh, unique entertainment, uh, especially at the minor league level. Minor league baseball is known for kind of creative, unique, uh, almost adventurous entertainment. Uh, in a very family-friendly way. So I think that's important. And in this case, starting new, all of our entertainment is unique because it's a new product for the market. But as we go uh, through the years, I think the challenge will be to keep it fresh and try different things and, and make sure it's not the same show over and over. Well, give me an example of some of the shows, as it were. Mm -hmm. uh, we had a, uh, there's some mascots and some entertainers that you can hire that make a living by touring <laughs> uh, minor league sports venues. So this yeah. this past uh, week we had Bird Zerk out, who is a, uh, a mascot who uh, gets paid for appearances and travels all over the country. Probably does a hundred plus appearances per year and earns a living uh, by being Bird Zerk, which is kind of just this bird character that does some different skits and things between innings and kind of interacts with fans and keeps them entertained. So those are one kind of thing where you can do. Um, where you hire somebody out and, and someone from out of town, they come in and put on a show, which is great. Uh, we can also do lots of local entertainment. We can have we have bands after games on some nights. Mm. We have uh, pre-game entertainment as people come in. Uh, last night at the ballpark, we had our military appreciation night, I'm which so was glad you did that. a fantastic yeah. event. And it wasn't as much entertainment, but it certainly added to the event. We had a swearing in of uh, some new army soldiers on the field before the game, and they got a huge round of applause from the the crowd and then we also had about a hundred uh, returning soldiers from Iraq uh, there last night who uh, were recognized on the field and got an extended standing ovation from the crowd uh, at Dow Diamond last night so you know those kind of things um, are great to do obviously because we want to thank people like that and, and show our appreciation but also it makes it a memorable night at the ballpark uh, for, for fans. Do you have someone responsible for entertainment? Who does all that? That's a lot of... It is. It's a big, big part of our job. We presentation. Have a, yeah. We have, uh, I'm very involved in, with it, but we have a few, few folks uh, whose primary responsibility is to execute all of that entertainment and, and conceive it, plan it, execute it, uh, evaluate it after the fact and see is this something we want to do again or how would we change this if we were to do this next year. So we have uh, an assistant general manager of marketing and promotions. Uh, his name's Chris Mudhank, and he handles uh, most of those things. And then he has a few people working with him as well. What do you look for when you when you want to hire someone? The biggest thing we look for, our, our, our hiring philosophy is summed up pretty simply. We, we try to hire for attitude and train for skill. Um, oh, I love that yeah, line. What yeah, kind of attitude do you want to Absolutely. Attitude, we need uh, people who are... Uh, friendly, outgoing, uh, very uh, focused on our customer service mission, like to interact with people, um, you know, high energy type 
people is what it takes to succeed in minor league baseball. I think it's a long season. Uh, yeah. We put in a lot of time uh, and effort, and, and we need people that can really bring a lot of energy to that effort. And most of our jobs, especially our, our summer jobs, our stadium jobs, whether it's food service or taking tickets or doing security, we want people who, who have that attitude and will teach them the job. I had a fan, actually it's a good story, uh, if I have a minute to tell it, yeah. a fan after a few games came up to me and said um, she had talked with one of our employees down there and she had, was commenting to the employee, you know, everybody I meet here is always so happy and upbeat and, and energetic and, and, and polite and all those kinds of things. And, and the fan asked the employee, is that something they, you know, they trained you for, or they talked about in your training? And the employee gave what I think is the perfect response and she said, no, that's just all that's just the way we are you know <laughs> you know we're not going to make somebody into something they're not we're, we want to find those people and then have them be part of our team and, and train them to do the jobs they need to do you mentioned to me you came to this career by way of a summer job mm -hmm. what drew you to that summer job you know I was a senior at Georgetown University uh, in Washington DC uh, and as as pretty much everybody does at that time in their life I was yeah. thinking about what's next and uh, thought about a variety of options and none of those were really didn't really excite me. I mean, they all seemed feasible and would be, I guess, perfectly doable, but, but nothing that really kind of got me excited. And uh, I had a, one of my best friends in college and, and a roommate, his older brother was involved with professional baseball. Uh, and his older brother was also a Georgetown graduate, so we had this connection. So I called him and asked him how he got started and what, what he did. He was actually working for the team in Spokane at the time. And uh, I... Uh, I ended up taking a job with that franchise uh, for, it was a summer job for three months, so a couple days after graduation I got in the car uh, <laughs> and I, uh, I drove to Spokane uh, uh, and I took a summer job and I, I loved that part of it because I knew it was three months and if yeah. it didn't work out and I wanted to get back to the East Coast or, or do something different I could just get in my car and come back and it turned out that it worked out. I, uh, had a great summer, I enjoyed the business, I learned a lot, and I accepted a full-time job after that, and I stayed with that franchise for 11 years. Um, and the one part of that story that my wife always teases me about for, for leaving out is that I had a girlfriend at the time. Oh, <laughs> from that area? <laughs> from that area. Uh, we had met at Georgetown, and she was uh, uh, from Seattle, and she was going back to law school in Seattle. And, uh, and Spokane's about four hours away from Seattle, but it was, you know. In the neighborhood. In the neighborhood, so we thought that would be okay. and. Uh, and that obviously didn't last, which was perfectly okay, and, but the baseball part of my life did, and then I actually ended up meeting my wife at a game in Spokane. How did that so, happen? Yeah, I, would just, uh, I knew her family pretty well. Uh, she has three brothers, and her uh, family had all had summer jobs with the team, and uh, her parents were season ticket holders of the team. Uh, but she actually was living in Seattle, uh, and then moved back to Spokane one summer, and we met at a game uh, at her parents' season ticket seats. <laughs> and uh, ended up uh, getting married a couple years later. So uh, Spokane was very good to me uh, in terms of starting my career, meeting my wife, starting my family. It was a, uh, it's a great place. What did you find out uh, about the job and yourself that made you want it as a career that you, summer? You know, it's a great question. And I think I, I've never felt for one day uh, that I've, I've had to get up and go to work. You know, oh, yeah. I mean, it, it, I, I go to work at baseball stadiums. I've, I, we're putting on events. I'm a big baseball fan. I always have been. So that was kind of the initial draw to be around baseball. Uh, but over the years, that's, that's been very fun and, and exciting and, and creates a lot of memories. But over the years, what I really like about it and what I like specifically about minor league baseball is that when we open our gates and when we do our jobs really well, we send, last night, hopefully we sent 5,000 people home happy um, at the end of their day and and not because of the baseball that's part of it but because they were out with their family with their right. kids with their friends they had a few hours to to uh, not, not spend a lot of money to bond to have some fun to have some laughs to get treated well by our staff to you know be be told thank you for coming and people leave with smiles on their face and every day when I see that I feel like you know I had something to do with that and I think that's uh, valuable and, and pretty rewarding. 
How much autonomy, well, it's too new probably with the inaugural season, but how much autonomy would you like to give if you don't give now your various uh, heads of departments? A, a lot. I think, you know, we, we, as far as a leadership style, I think I'm, I'm maybe if I, if I uh, misstep, I probably misstep on the side of too much autonomy in, in time, in sometimes, but I think that's the way I prefer to do it. Uh, uh, one, because I don't know everything, certainly, and, and, right. and you need to give those people autonomy to, to make the decisions and to, to have the results that they're capable of achieving. And, and two, I think that's what breeds leadership. We're certainly trying to breed lots of and create lots of leaders in our organization um, and, and build careers. We want to be a place where people who have an interest in working in sports or baseball can come and, and develop a career, either with our organization, if there are appropriate opportunities, or have their time with us, serve them well as they move on to other opportunities. So that's an important part of it uh, for me, and I think that's what makes it a fun place to work. So I, I'd say a lot of autonomy. Who did the hiring? We, uh, well, I was the first employee as of this week last year. Uh, we welcomed oh. our second employee this week last year. So uh, now we have uh, about 18 full-time employees, uh, about another six or seven college interns, and another 220 or so uh, seasonal employees. So in all the full-time employees, I was very, very involved. What an opportunity. Absolutely, absolutely. And I mean, most companies, you know, when they grow to a certain size, they've kind of grown, they've kind of progressed gradually or, or, or there's a kind of a natural progression. Yeah. For, in our case, we almost had to emerge fully formed, you know, right. um, which was challenging. but. Uh, our staff is fantastic. I, I'd hire every one of them again. Uh, they're doing a great job, putting in a lot of effort. And then our game day employees, we had a job fair in February for our, our kind of our hourly part-time jobs. And we have about 200 jobs, maybe a little more, 220 jobs to fill. And we had 1,300 people attend a wow. job fair. So we got to select some really good people. And when you're not looking for a specific skill, like I mentioned before, right. and some jobs have some skills that we need, but for the most part, we're not looking for a specific skill. We're just looking for the personality. It makes it, it's a nice opportunity to hire people that you really are excited to be around. If one wanted a career in baseball management, how mm -hmm. would they get started? You know, there's a couple opportunities. I think um, as far as, as, as when they're students, uh, there are some sport management programs out there. Oh. Uh, uh, Northwood has a fantastic one uh, that mm. uh, a lot of students are uh, drawn to. Um, but I think, and there's master's programs in sports management and things like that. I'm an example of, of uh, a different route right. in that I was a history and government major at Georgetown. I don't have a business degree. I don't have a sports management degree. I don't have a, an, an MBA um, and have been able to have some success and what I did, I actually got linked up with an organization called Professional Baseball Employment Opportunities, uh, which is run by minor league baseball, and it's kind of a, a job bank, job service for people looking to start careers in baseball. And they have a job fair every year, and I attended that when I was a senior at Georgetown. Uh, that's how I got linked up with Spokane. I, I, uh, mm. uh, my contact, who I mentioned earlier, right. encouraged me to go to this job fair which was in, it's in December every year at the baseball winter meetings. So every executive in baseball is there, major league and minor league. Um, thousands of people there kind of for four is or five days. it always days. held at the same place? It rotates cities. Mm -hmm. uh, this year we're off to Nashville, I think, <laughs> the Opryland Hotel in Nashville, Tennessee. Um, the year I went, uh, it was in Dallas when I was a student. And I went just to kind of learn and meet people and make contacts, and I, I left with a, an opportunity to work in Spokane. Uh, it's so wonderful that you just went to that. Yeah. What else did you go to when you were trying to figure out what might you do after college? The, well, what else did I was I yeah, drawn to? Think, yeah, uh, law school was a you know a big thought in my mind. Yeah, uh, uh, all my friends, pretty much my good yeah. college friends, are all attorneys. Yeah, <laughs> um, and and I you know that was interesting to me, and I think it would have been challenging and and, and interesting, but it didn't excite me in any way. Um, you know, I thought of teaching, I thought of some other things, but. But when I, I kind of said, okay, I'm just going to give it some time here. I can, right. I can pursue this baseball thing for a year or so, and if it doesn't work or if I don't think it's what I want to do, then law school or any of those other options will always be there. Um, and it turned out that I loved it. So, 
Do you like the variety? What, what, what yeah. appeals to you in the job? I think the, the, the biggest thing that appeals to me is, is that, that chance to make people happy. You know, I mean, that's, that's what we do. And when, tonight, again, we'll have close to 5,000 people there. And I view our job, my job is to lead our staff in, in our effort to make everybody happy and have a great time. And then, you Do you know, travel with the team? No. Uh -huh. uh, when, when the team's gone, it's a chance for me to, uh, first and foremost, uh, spend some more time with my family because when the team's home, it's, it's all out. hours. Yeah. yeah. And then also to, we plan all of our events and everything we need to do f for the games when the team comes back. So uh, I like to travel to other minor league ballparks uh, to get ideas and to see how other teams are operating and try to learn from what they do well and maybe also learn from what they don't do so well. Uh, so we try to visit some, but, but uh, you don't have as much time to get out as you'd like. Now, what did you take from, say, your marriage that you use in your job? Or what did you take from your job that you use in your marriage yeah. to make things go better? You know, it's, it's interesting. I, I take a lot, of, uh, lot from my marriage to my job in terms of uh, I don't think you could do this job without incredible, incredible support uh, yeah. from a spouse uh, or family members who you're involved with, whether it's parents or a spouse. But in my case... Uh, my wife Shauna is fantastic. I mean, she she, is. she makes uh, a lot of sacrifices. She, she she cares for our son quite a bit. You know, in the evenings when we have games and those kinds of things, uh, and and it's hard sometimes, uh, especially when we have five six games in a row and those are all long days. So uh, certainly, any success I've had is is kind of a, a family thing. I think it's she's just as much responsible for the Great Lakes Loons and and all of our success as I am. Um, so and she, she helps kind of keep it in perspective too. I think in terms mm. of you know when when things aren't going as well, she can kind of put it in perspective. And also when things are going really well, make sure that we're not getting too far ahead of ourselves and, and too proud of ourselves, which is a good thing. I think and you know she works two days a week. She's a nurse practitioner and she works in Saginaw at uh, Health Deliveries, mm. which is a, a, a healthcare clinic for an underserved population in inner city Saginaw. So she sees mm. some really, really tough cases. Uh, and when I come home at the end of a day, my bad day is, hey, we only drew 5,000 people tonight instead of, you know, 5,200. Right. And her bad day is, well, let me tell you all You're about right. all these people that I saw. So it kind of puts a little bit into perspective uh, what we're doing. It makes me thankful for, for the job I do have. Yes. Um, what, um, what would you like your son to learn what would you like to teach him you know I think I think our a lot I mean I, I don't know how to answer that in a half hour but a lot but I think from from my career standpoint our job is very much about pleases and thank yous and and just kind of common courtesies and and shaking people's hand and meeting people and I'd like him to be that kind of person who likes to meet people who's curious about other people who uh, is, is courteous and, and polite and, and tries his best to, to help other people when he can. And I think that's what, you know, that's something that's kind of central to our, my job. And I'd like him to, to see that and, and learn that. Do you think there are different, uh, 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 what do I want to say, fans that go to baseball versus, say, football or hockey? Absolutely. Well, how, <laughs> Absolutely. How, how I know so? there are. I think um, baseball is, is much more of, I think, a social yeah, or, uh, I shouldn't say social. The other, football is very social, but baseball is almost a conversational kind of sport because the pace of the game is slower, uh, right. and some people criticize it for that. But but it's a it's a sporting event where you can go out and sit down for a couple hours with somebody that you want to spend some time with, whether it's family or friends or right. coworkers, and and have some time to talk while you're still enjoying the game. Whereas some of the other sports. You're, you're very much focused on the game, and it's not as kind of conversational. I think. Interesting. There, there's an intensity about a football or a hockey game that, that yeah, in some cases... takes you isn't. away from the interaction socially. Yeah, yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Um, uh, I was uh, hearing the other day that attendance at, um, like, history museums and uh, home, historic homes are down. Maybe museums are doing all right. Uh, do you think the culture has changed in any way since you started your career that's more interested in one thing or another? You know, I, uh, 
maybe not so much in the in the 12 or 13 years I've been doing it. I think um, I think people are responding still to no matter how much the culture changes, people will still respond to kind of being treated well at an affordable yes. price. You know, yes. I mean that's what people are looking for, uh, and and being thanked for coming and and having a nice time, having people take care of them, going above and beyond for them. So no matter all the other changes in the culture, I think people still respond to that. I think people's attention spans are, are shorter, <laughs> you know, and I think which is a, a function of a lot of things. I mean, uh, television, internet, and, and all those things. So I think that, that plays into the entertainment side of our business, which I think also might explain why um, some of the other attendants at other facilities, like you mentioned, museums and things are down that People don't have 30 minutes to sit down and read a newspaper, yeah. let alone the patients for two hours to walk through a museum or those kind of things. Um, so I think people's attention spans are, are getting sure. shorter and shorter and shorter. We want to thank Paul for being with us today. We've learned a great deal, and that is when you start out in life, be open to possibilities. Know yourself and have the courage to try um, a couple of things. He also did something very smart, and that is he gave himself not only <clears throat> a chance, but he put himself into the circle by going to that, um, um, what do I want to call it, uh, um, meeting where he could find more out about baseball and ultimately led to his chance out in um, the West, out in Seattle, in Spokane. But the, uh, the personal also played into it as his wife reminded him and he was kind enough to share and that is he had incentive as well on the personal side. So he's trying to live in the professional, he was trying to live in the personal. And it's a wonderful, wonderful way of people. I encourage you to be this way, and if you're ever in a management position, to also follow that. And that is, he looks for attitude. That is basically upbeat, um, alert, wanting to please, willing to say thank you, enjoys life, because he feels the skills, he thinks the skills can can be acquired or taught. And that's also very useful to carry yourself around that way. He's very grateful to his wife for being a leveler and understanding his hours and also for her job that puts his life in a, uh, a perspective. But mostly he takes satisfaction from giving people satisfaction. They came away from a good time with something that he had a large hand in created. And he had a wonderful opportunity here. Rare in life do you do a startup. And to have that succeed and, and do so well as it had as an inaugural se as, um, season has to be a great satisfaction for him. So we want to thank him for being with us today. And remember, remember what I ask you every single time to do. Please do something kind for someone you know and someone you know don't know today and every day. Thank you and we'll see you next time. To contact Junia, send her an email at info at juniadone.com. For more information, program schedules, and news about future guests, Go to www.juniadome.com.